Welcome to part 43 of the Basic Training Booster Pass Edition. Today we're going to cover everything you need to know to play Daisy Circuit on 150cc. The recommended build for this track is going to be Peachette, Teddy Buggy, Rollers, and Paper Glider. First things first, there's an easy way to play the track, and then there's a hard way. Everything I'm going to go over is doable online, but after covering my own strats, I'll break down some safer alternatives that you can use if those are giving you trouble. As you can see, when the run begins, we're going to be snaking back and forth, starting with a left drift. After starting your second right drift, widen up so that you can grab these first two coins, and then immediately upon building a super mini turbo, hop out of it and start another right drift. Funny thing about this mushroom cut we're about to take. You might think it's like the Ninja Hideaway shortcut where you can just shroom through whenever you feel like it. However, you do want to use your mushroom relatively late here because the stairs beyond the piranha plant cutout actually act like off-road. This is important because what we're going to want to do is hold this drift up the stairs so that we can do some glider vectoring at the end of the cut. But if you use your mushroom too early, it'll run out before you hit the boost panel and then you'll lose your drift. Make sure to land on a left drift to grab the coin, and then we're going to right drift to build up a mini turbo before starting our next right drift into the tunnel section. Now, at this point, I'd like to take a step back because as you can see, we're going to be building an ultra mini turbo in this tunnel. On lap 1, we need to go wide to grab the coins, so this buys us enough time that building the Ultra Mini Turbo really isn't that bad. But on laps 2 and 3, we're going to take a much tighter line, meaning that you're going to have to be soft drifting pretty much the entire turn, and if you don't have good soft drifting, that Ultra Mini Turbo is going to be literally impossible. So what I'd recommend instead is just building up a Super Mini Turbo and then releasing it as soon as you get it. You can widen up a bit to still build up an Ultra Mini Turbo, but I haven't really tested out how much faster or slower that is. While we're on the subject of soft drifting, it's also required for the snaking that we did at the very start of the run, so if you're finding that kind of obnoxious, get the first mini turbo and then just drive straight for a bit. Then, start a wide left drift to grab the first couple coins, and carry that drift over this tiny bit of off-road before grabbing the next two coins. You'll build up an ultra mini turbo this way, so release it and once again, use your mushroom as late as possible so that you can get to the boost panel. Now back to the PB strats. After getting that Ultra Mini Turbo, we're going to do a wide left drift to build up a Mini Turbo before this ramp. We're not going to be doing a normal Mini Turbo trick here though, because that will cause us to run into the wall. Instead, we want to right hop to release the Mini Turbo just before getting to the ramp so that we can still use the boost to get a Mini Turbo trick. And then, we want to angle ourselves in such a way that we land on top of the sidewalk on the left hand side of the track. If you did it correctly, you'll land right about where this flower is at, but I released my Mini Turbo a little bit too early on lap 1. As you'll see when we watch the full run, my laps 2 and 3 execute this strategy much better. Taking this next turn tightly is an exercise in precision, but what you want to do is widen up a little bit until just around when you get to the red cone and then start tightening up. As long as you do that, you should be okay. To finish up the lap, we're going to start a left drift, making sure to land on this little ramp here, widening up once we get to the final straightaway. Then, we're going to hop out of the drift and start another left drift. It's really hard to do this properly, but the idea is that we need to tighten up a bit to help us build the mini turbo. The problem is, if we tighten too much, we'll run into the wall on the left. So what we have to do is counterbalance this with some wide drift angles to avoid the wall. But as you can see, there's this big ass pillar on our right. And if we widen too early or too much, we'll run into it. Unfortunately, I don't have a ton of advice as far as visual cues go. You kind of just have to get a feel for it through trial and error. Now after the snaking going into lap 2, we're going to do a right drift in preparation for this little shroomless shortcut here. The way that I do it is intentionally widen up a bit and then release the super mini turbo and jump just before getting to the off-road, similar to how I'd approach the Hyrule Circuit shortcut if you watch my videos on that topic. This will allow you to jump clean over the off-road and maintain all your speed. You can then land in a right drift, mushroom through the shortcut just like before, and build up a super mini turbo for the glider vectoring instead of a mini turbo like on lap 1. Now here's the thing. The world record does this shortcut a little bit differently, taking a much tighter line and using the track barrier like a little ramp. They then release the Super Mini Turbo just before landing in the off-road so that they can jump and still maintain their speed. I compared my method to the world record, specifically comparing how long it took to get from the cut to the glider, and amazingly enough, the times were identical, down to the thousandth of a second. However, like I mentioned earlier, the world record takes a much tighter line than I do, which I think saves time over my method. And it's also much more consistent than my method, so when doing your own runs, copy the world record and not the personal best run that you're seeing here. Now that's not the only thing the world record does differently than me. An additional thing they do is on lap 1, they build up a super mini turbo when coming out of the tunnel instead of a mini turbo like we did. When coming out of the tunnel on all three laps, they build up an additional mini turbo after going off the ramp and do two right alignment hops before starting the right drift. The other difference is that they snake a little bit more at the start of laps 2 and 3. 
If it wasn't obvious though, all of this is ridiculously precise and not really worth the effort if your goal is just to get good for online play. Now that's it for the strats, let's talk about the track a bit more while checking out my current personal best. And as always, if you found the video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could click the like button and drop a nice comment below, as this helps the video get spread to more people. Thanks for doing that for me, I really appreciate it. Now, Daisy Circuit. I love this track so much, and it's honestly kinda hard to say why. So, catch you all in the outro, see ya. Okay, okay. I think a lot of people take a look at this track and see just yet another circuit track, and I can kind of understand that, but when you compare this to like Flower Cup Mario Circuit, Mario Circuit 3, GBA Mario Circuit, or Toad Circuit, it's gotta be kind of obvious that this is head and shoulders above any of those, right? For me, it comes down to a couple of reasons. This to me is just one of the more charming courses in the game. Being placed in a late afternoon setting on the boardwalk really triggers the nostalgia for me and ironically gives me more of that LA vibe than LA Laps does. The theming is also really strong with the music, which is written with this kind of jazzy, bossa nova, mixolydian sound that just makes it impossible not to feel happy. And also, if it wasn't obvious, I'm not that big of a music theory guy, I kinda just did some googling, so I'll just say that any song that I catch myself whistling while doing chores deserves a special shout out. The other thing I appreciate about this course is that it really rewards good technical play. I'm gonna link to my easier run as an unlisted video, and if you watch it, you'll notice that really the only differences are that I don't do any of the snaking, and that I only get a super mini turbo in the tunnel. But that stuff saves about a second per lap, and getting it successfully requires precise lines and excellent soft drifting. And so this is a course that has a very high skill ceiling, despite the fact that it looks simple on paper. Now this isn't the best track in the game to be sure, since it lacks a lot of what I find really special about some of the tracks that I rank higher. At the end of the day, look, it is a fairly straightforward circuit track, and the mushroom shortcut usually isn't enough to help you out if things go wrong during a race, but those are honestly really minor nitpicks, and overall, if this course comes up in Worldwides, there's a really high likelihood that I'm going to pick it. And that's everything you need to know to play Daisy Cruiser on 150cc. Hopefully you all found this video helpful, and if so, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell before you go, since I've got a lot more videos in the pipeline, even after basic training is done. Thank you all very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.